On today's show, stories of our best friends. Mm -hmm. Up first, a man and his dog. It's a story that has now come full circle. Then get to know Minnesota Bound Millie, the newest team mascot. Plus the tale of hunting dogs, so many breeds and so many strong hunters. Minnesota Bound, presented by Kinetical Water Treatment Systems. Hey everybody, Laura and I welcome you to today's episode. Up first, a story that's a difficult one for our Minnesota Bound team, my family, and especially my dad, Ron Shera. It's about loss, but also it's about creating new memories. I'm Ron Shera, my buddy Raven. Come on, Raven. Come on, girl. They are gone now. Three ravens, all black Labradors, mother to daughter, and each in their own time. My sidekick on and off camera, but always the stars of Minnesota Bound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, three ravens gone, but not forgotten. Here at Two Rivers Wildlife Management Area, the three ravens are remembered for good reason. The three ravens helped raise money to acquire public wildlife lands, and Two Rivers was the first. This will be here for ever, hopefully. Yeah, it's a good spot for the dogs. Good spot, ravens. Now the time has come to spread raven ashes for a final goodbye. The idea to have a raven on Minnesota Bound was this lady's idea. <laughs> it was my idea to put raven in this shot. It just went with the picture. And she's never let me forget it. <laughs> this beautiful monument was created and donated by Pheasants Forever. That dog told uh, uh, an entirely new story for a lot of people that hunting isn't just about you know harvesting a bird or a deer but it's about clean water clean air great places to enjoy the outdoors so it's, it's such a bigger story and again that symbol of raven out there you know running doing the things that she loved right that we all love that was magic if you spent 10 minutes at the state fair to go see Raven, how many hundreds of thousands of people were introduced to the concept of the legacy amendment, of what we need to do on a landscape for more access and to build wildlife areas. That monument will be there forever. People will learn the story and hopefully they'll take that with them. Hopefully there's a that ripple effect continues, you know, for, for everyone. Well, this is where they'd like to be. Raven one and two, they're gonna be here. And Raven the third, she loved hunting. detail. What better to tie it with is some fishing line. Ha <laughs> She liked to be in a boat too. You, you got your dress on. Time to do the show. Awesome.
Coming up, get to know Minnesota Bound's newest ambassador. Meet Millie next. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Aluma Trailers, Ice Castle Fish House and RV, and by Coors Light. Raven the Black Lab can never be replaced, but we can continue the show's legacy with a new friend to all. It's time to meet Minnesota Bound Millie. Our love of dogs runs deep. Yes. Our connection to canines is in our DNA as we evolve together. For centuries, dogs have been a part of our lives as providers, protectors, boy. work partners, Easy, whoa. simply a best friend, and more. <laughs> For 25 years, Ron Shera shared the spotlight and his love of Black Labs with his companion, Raven. Many of us have a special place in our hearts for Raven, as the bond between Ron and Raven reminded us of our own relationship with our fur family members. After Raven passed and the time healed our broken hearts, we decided that our passion for dogs needed to live on. With that, meet Minnesota bound Millie. Millie is not a replacement to Raven, but is our mascot. Hey everybody, Laura and I and Millie welcome you to today's show. A brand ambassador representing our love of the outdoors and gun dogs. Millie is a one and a half year old black lab owned by a Minnesota Bound team member. She occasionally enjoys sharing the spotlight on the show, but we all know Millie really prefers to be out in the field chasing pheasants and other upland game just as she was born to do. Dogs seem to teach us that the joys in life are pretty simple. If watching a wagging tail can put a smile on our face, why would we ever pass that up? Still ahead, police dogs square off in canine competition. But first, the story behind versatile hunting dogs. We show you what the hype is all about. Closed captioning provided by Star Bank. Explore Minnesota's outdoor archive. Uncover and discover your story through the Minnesota Historical Society. Minnesota's state-run fish hatcheries date back to the mid to late 1800s. Both cold and warm water hatcheries popped up around the state to help maintain and enhance fishing in our lakes, streams, and rivers. Workers raised trout, salmon, walleyes, northern pike, bass, and even bluegills. Even now, 15 state hatcheries still operate. The goal that we may all always have fishing opportunities. Hot to trot has new meaning with these rare hunting breeds, also known as versatile hunting dogs. <laughs> When it comes to choosing a breed of dog to be your hunting companion, most everyone has a strong opinion, and some can't choose just one. Generally, I have six to eight different breeds of dogs here. Hey, Z. Yeah, Z dog. Hey, Spice. What do you think? Good boy. Ed Erickson, owner of Autumn Breeze Kennels, is not only a hunting dog enthusiast, He's also a dog trainer who specializes in the versatile hunting dog. I trained my first Brocco Italiano 20 years ago. There was like 40 of them in the United States. Today, five to 600. They're definitely a laid back dog. They have a different style. The Brocco Italiano is known for 
its famous trot. They call it a brogan. They have probably the best nose of any of the bird dogs I've trained. They're phenomenal with their nose. A great nose is a plus, but what makes the Bracco Italiano so versatile? Versatile bird dog is a dog that'll hunt land and water, track wounded game, and track big game blood track if trained to do that. So they're a versatile dog. The Bracco has a slight bloodhound appearance, yet is full of pointing and hunting history. The Bracco Italiano, first recognized about 700 AD, and uh, it was originally a netting dog before firearms or using bows. Then he hunt them up. What they would do is they'd uh, get cubbies of birds and they'd push them into a, an area, and then they'd stop and they'd point so a person could throw the net over the birds or over the game to catch it and retrieve it. Benny, here. Good boy. There are 30 different breeds that are recognized as versatile hunting dogs. Another is the large Munsterlander. It's a German breed. The breed was actually discovered in 1919 in Munster, Germany. This year we're celebrating the 100th anniversary of the breed. It came to the United States in uh, 1961. You still may be wondering what all the hype is about. I've always said, you know, use a well-trained dog, preserve game. So a lot of people ain't good shots. These dogs are good at finding the cripples. If you're a pointer owner, you may relate to this. I don't get wet feet. I tell everybody. I have a lot of clients that come and say, well, I don't need to worry about water work. I don't duck hunt. Well, I say, have you ever shot a pheasant going across a pond? I've done that. This is my dog will go in there and search, and I don't have to throw rocks or any of that. They're going to find the bird. Conservation of game is key, but the versatile hunting dog enthusiast also wants to preserve the breed. You're at a Minnesota Versatile Hunting Dog Federation evaluation. This is an outstanding tool for gun dog breeders, gun dog breed clubs, individual hunters as a one-stop shop to evaluate all the characteristics of a versatile hunting dog, and this is a way to accelerate the process of making sure that you have a well-trained dog and a highly talented dog. And that's why we use the Versatile Hunting Dog Federation to evaluate our dogs and improve their hunting capabilities. Versatile as a hunting dog or home companion. Either way, they always become family. They want to please. They'll come up and lick my mustache. And, you know, they're very personable dogs, all of them. You know, I've trained 24 different breeds of pointing dogs, and they've all got a special place. Hey, everybody. Bill Shirk on behalf of Lowrance. You know, I'm a big fan of Lowrance's fish reveal technology. It's been around a couple of years, but I still don't think people quite understand how well it works. So I want to show you. This is a conventional 2D view of the lake, and that's what people have been looking at for years and years. And it's really good at showing you fish. Fish reveal technology takes the fish marks on this screen and overlays it on the new technology called Downscan. Downscan is really good at showing weeds and all that, but that 2D fish reveal shows you where the fish are. Let me show you. All I do is go into my menu here. There's fish reveal. I turn it on. Now we look for fish. Look at that. It is so easy to see those fish in high contrast colors. Why that helps you is, it helps you see fish that might be hiding in the weeds or just tough to see on older conventional sonar. <laughs> fish reveal. It really shows you where they are. Now our job is to catch them. Straight ahead, a Minnesota Bound Classic dedicated to a competition for those who wear the badge. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Moen's Mouse Mix. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing.
Today's Minnesota Bound Classic takes us back to the year 1996. To the day Ron Shera witnessed the coolest of canine competitions. It's not a dog show, but the dogs will grab your attention. Officially, it's known as the U.S. Police Canine Association Detector Dog Certification. That's a mouthful, but those involved say it's even bigger. I guess it's a canine Super Bowl in a way. It's a test to find the nation's best detector dogs, but they're not looking for a bone. These dogs use their superb sniffer to locate illegal narcotics and bombs. For this reason, these are special dogs with equally special handlers. Both have had extensive training, and it's all done to take advantage of a dog's super sense of smell. A human being can differentiate between five and 7,000 different smells, and a dog can uh, differentiate between 500,000, so it's really tough to compare, really tough to imagine how sensitive their nose are. Over time, dogs evolved with a large nose and a muzzle that is lined with olfactory glands, providing an acute sense of smell. That super nose is used by detector dogs, much like my hunting buddy Raven has been trained to follow her nose to roust a ringneck pheasant. What we do here with, with both the bomb dogs and their narcotics dogs are very similar to, to, to the, uh, the guy with the, uh, with the Labrador or the golden retriever that goes out hunting. We take the scent of a bird and exchange it for narcotics or bombs. Hey. Mike Rudolph and his dog Grady know all about finding bombs and drugs in fact, they are a legendary team in the Canine Corps. Grady, a golden retriever, is a two-time world champ. Together, they've helped discover millions of dollars worth of illegal narcotics and dangerous bombs. But this championship combo had humble beginnings. Got Grady here from a pound in Wisconsin. He's an unwanted dog, be ready to be uh, euthanized, and uh, we thought, well, We'd give him a try and see what he, how he'd work out. And a lot of the dogs live at home with their handlers. They're treated as, as a family member. They, uh, you know, their days off are with us. Uh, you go up to your lake places. Their vacations, they're with you. Uh, uh, actually, they're with you more than your, uh, than your, uh, than your family because uh, they're both there at home. And then again, when you go to work, every day you go to work, they go to work. Uh, so uh, there's a strong uh, relationship between the dogs and the, and the handlers and they'll need that teamwork today. Under the sharp eye of judges, the dogs and their handlers are evaluated. A high score and certification from this conference adds credibility later, when the dog's work is before another judge in a courtroom. Today's competition includes dogs from the CIA. These are the very dogs that guard the White House and the president. In this test, they'll have 10 minutes to find hidden explosives. Behind this license plate, buried in the frame of the car, is smokeless powder. The CIA team scored high in this event, a payoff after a year of intensive training. I banged the first one right off. He gave me a pretty good sit response. I was really confident that that was uh, where the hide was at. Check it out. Check for dope. In another event, Mike Rudolph and Grady are in pursuit of marijuana. They attack the room with nosy precision. You're talking gram size, possibly, of, of narcotics can be d virtually hidden anywhere. The dog's noses are like seven, seven million times better than ours. If you can fathom that, I don't know. Uh, a lot of times I, I, I say, I can't imagine what this world must smell like to them. <laughs> Although Mike and Grady didn't repeat as champions this time, the scores were close. You could say they lost by a nose. Pretty cool. Today you can find police dog competitions all over the United States. To serve and protect and have a little bit of fun at the same time. Well that about does it for us. Until next week, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. To get more Minnesota Bound, including full episodes, go to mnbound.com. And to follow our latest adventures, like us on Facebook.